Welcome back to the show, my fellow Story Americans. For today's guest, we have Danila Palmieri. Danila is an immigrant from Brazil who brings over 20 years of experience in financial services, manufacturing, mining, and metal companies in Brazil, Latin America, and the United States. She has worked with companies such as Experian, Varantin Metais, and Braskem in Brazil. She has extensive experience implementing projects to evaluate, analyze, and improve business strategies. She served as Human Resources and Organizational Development Manager in Brazil. In 2013, she founded Connect Solutions, a rapid business growth company that aims to help clients achieve their interpersonal, international business goals on an expedited timeline using a variety of tactics in HR strategy and operations. With experience managing corporate projects at the highest levels, she is an expert in strategy, project management, HR, and business acceleration. In Atlanta for 10 years now, she has been part of the Brazilian American Chamber of the Southeast USA for over seven years, acting as a chairman between 2019 and 2020. She also served for five years as a member of the board of WTC Atlanta. Finally, she has also co-authored an Amazon bestseller called Business Tips from the Trenches. Danila is an extraordinary person, and I'm honored to have her on the show. Danila, are you there? Yes, Cosmos. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Very good as well. Thank you for asking. Now, I'm I'm really honored and grateful that you took the time to do this uh, podcast with us because you you have so much experience and so much knowledge and wisdom. And uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you about it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. Um, if I have a chance, you know, to learning from people and also to give, you know, something that I learn in my life until now, I'm happy to. If someone in this world see this podcast and kind of get in inspired, right, and do something about it, I'm happy with that. That's awesome, Danila. So, Danila, uh, can you tell me and the audience a little bit more about yourself, your background and how you got started? Yes. So as you said in my bio, I was born and raised in Brazil, um, in the big city, Sao Paulo, as I believe uh, everyone hears about Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo in Brazil, right? So big city, I always compare Sao Paulo with New York, right? Very crowded, the financials, all the business happen um, in Sao Paulo. I came from a family, the ones that want to read uh, the book. We're going to see a little bit about this, my background, right? I came from a, a family where my parents had to reinvent themselves when I was around seven years old and uh, they lost their jobs and we had to um, live with my grandparents, right? That's what's happened with me when I was around seven, eight years old. I have a brother four years younger than me and um, wasn't easy for my parents, you know, to, to go through that moment. Uh, well, they did a great job. I graduated in chemical engineer. I'm a chemical engineer. I, I, I am thankful for my mom. Uh, more because she was the person that guided me and helped me to make uh, this decision to become an engineer and was, you know, uh, the best thing for me because this opened a lot of doors uh, where I had the chance to, you know, work in big corporations in Brazil. I had the chance to start as an intern and uh, I, I had the chance also to choose uh, to focus my, my career. I say I'm no longer an engineer, has been 20-ish years uh, because I, I focused my, my career in governance and in strategy, more in a systemic field, more than the operational, technical and, and execution, even though of course, I was responsible for, for executing a lot of things. Um, in my career, though, I had a chance to do some merging and acquisitions in Latin America and in here in the U.S. 
And I chose as my last corporate role to be in, in charge of the leadership development, right? And this is my passion to take care about people and to help them uh, thrive and understand their strengths, their weaknesses, how can we help them achieve uh, their next goal? That's why I, I decided. And 10 years ago, I came to Atlanta, where I live uh, for the, the 10 years now, and I decided to become an entrepreneur, right? And this entrepreneurship was motivated actually by a friend that I started to consult with him. And when I came to the U.S., he said, why not? Let's open up a business together. We did it. A year after, he decided no longer be part of the business. And then I decided to, to focus that is Connect Solutions, a, a consulting company where we support um, international companies doing business here in the U.S. And our core business is on human resources as outsourced, right? So it has been great 10 years here in the U.S. Um, I love this community. Uh, I love Atlanta. Atlanta is my is my city, right outside outside Brazil. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a little bit about me, Cosmos. I I don't know what else I could add on that. No, Danila, you have like a like a, a a lot of experience in like business and just like strategy and operations and all that. So my question is, what was your strategy and goal regarding coming to America? And like uh, a regard with regards to career, and how did how did it uh, like transform from being in Brazil to being in America? Yes. So the thing that I've been learning, right? I didn't have too much difficult to settle here because I believe my mindset was already, you know, uh, aligned with the the culture here in in the sense that um arrive on time for meetings right to respect others times this kind of thing that's sometimes in brazil um i like to compare that here you late if you arrive it for the meeting five minutes before right if you arrive like on time you kind of hey you should be here a little bit early and in in brazil 15 minutes after the time we schedule it so oh, okay it's not that late right and also people sometimes don't have this respect as we have for others time right like if you have 30 minutes here is really common if you have 30 minutes for uh, our meeting the other the other person can say hey thank you cosmos right let's reschedule if you needed to discuss something else and uh, arrange another time because i have something else to do and in Brazil, sometimes we go on and on and on. Like in Brazil, when I schedule meetings with my, my clients or someone that we're starting, like uh, talking about, you know, business or something or know each other, I always schedule one hour. If you're here in America, I schedule like 30 minutes. Probably will be good for this first step. And then we see how, how it goes. But... You know, being here uh, and launch a, a business, of course, I learn more and more every year um, because I lived uh, 30 years in Brazil, right? And another 10, it's not enough to make me even <laughs> in, in culture wise. I have a lot of Brazilian culture uh, on me, of course. But the thing is, is it's uh, we need to pay attention, Cosmos. What I see, we need to, when when you are in a different culture. First, you need to pay attention, right, in on the details, and kind of uh, don't take your culture as what is right or wrong, because there is no right or wrong when we're talking about culture. There are differences right? Things that, you know, might be something okay for you, for me, might not be that okay, because of my background. But I have to understand and respect, right? 
It's not that I'm going to offend you or you're going to offend me because of cultural differences. So when you're talking about culture, for me, it's like a clean slate, you know, um, uh, white paper where we're going to build up our relationship on that. Because for sure, we have our differences, but these differences doesn't mean I am right, you are wrong, or vice versa, right? So we, we have to understand each other so we can communicate well with each other, right? And then you can uh, understand each other without judgment. That That's my point when I'm talking about culture, when we come to a different country, right? Even though when you're going to visit or, you know, you're going to do business, you have to understand how the other person mindset is related to that topic or to that issue you are handling and respect and try to explain. So it's always, I say always that balance, like, oh, I cannot be biased because of my background, but it let me understand how it works so I can communicate with that. And I've been working with my clients nowadays that we hire a lot of people for international companies and the majority of my clients, they are from Brazil. And sometimes a client call me and I said, hey, we are having this issue with our employee. And I always trying first thing is like, oh, let's understand their culture, right? Because sometimes the way they put things and the way we hear things is different. Right. So it's always like, oh, let's let's try to be in his shoes or her shoes so you can understand uh, what he or she is talking about. It's it's not confronting you or because in America we are more straightforward. Right. We are more direct. Um, our relationship with the business is transactional. Right. Uh, we trust each other. And sometimes like in Brazil, we are more personal, right? We like to know people. We like to, you know, um, understand the personal side. And here at personal, it's very limited. I open up my personal life for you, right? It's not you that come to asking me personal things. And we have to respect that. So that, I believe, is the beauty, Cosmos, of um, belonging to a different culture and having an opportunity to belong to another, right? So that's, for me, is the main, main uh, lesson I've been learning this, this years, right? To kind of, hey, don't jump onto conclusions without understand the other side, right? Because they might not thinking and they not raised as you raised. They not have, you know, so you have to understand what is, is, is behind that background or behind that everything. So you then you can, oh, now I have more information and I can make some decisions and adequate my communication in the line, the way I will do business and also how you're going to uh, receive that, right? That's, I believe, is the the major challenge and also the, for me, the most beautiful thing that we are different, right? Janela, you, uh, like, this is a very fast, this is a very fascinating topic for me because I myself am an immigrant that came from outside, right? Like, I lived in in i lived in an indian culture and i grew up in the middle east so i i knew all about the indian culture and the arab culture and then i came to america and then i was culture shop like it was crazy like if you were there if, if you were like my friend back in university like when i was in my university time and you saw me going about interacting with different people and like what do you, you talked about like you have to understand their culture like i just went about it like i the like, jumped into the water you know you know there's like a, a you normally put your toe into the water to see if it's cold or not i just like jumped straight in and it was just crazy there's like so much miscommunication and uh like people were like oh man this guy is interesting or, like some people were like man this uh like they became my friends right away the others were like 
okay, um, uh, we don't understand this person. But overall, like one of the revelations I had, and I, I would want your opinion on this was, uh, you know, like in brown cultures or like at least like from my experience in India. And then I've talked to some people from Latin America and they said that they're more heart based, you know, like what you just mentioned right now about people being personal, like that's more of like a family like a relationship kind of like thing. Right. Before you do business, you get to know them on a personal level. It's more heart based kind of thing. But what I noticed in America, at least in like business or like people that are entrepreneurial business people like at least in this culture is that it's more mind based and it's a more of like a okay it's there's no emotions little to no emotions involved there's no per, personal touch it's more profit and loss transactional like like you mentioned so when you mentioned that i was like man danila is is getting is like like th there's like this cross cultural thing cuz there's like latin america there's india and then there's like the middle east where things are more uh, it's coming from the heart, but but it's just like a, it's not. There's no right and wrong in it. It's just the the way things work. And then here, it's more of like almost like robotic, you know. Like there's it's all analytical and mind based and profit and loss. And there's yeah, but that's something that I noticed. But I don't know what's it like. Did you is that something you notice or is that uh or do you have a different opinion? Yeah, no, I I think my my opinion is is the same, and I and I I see this way, Cosmos. Right, like um, uh, my husband used to work for an Indian company here in the U.S. That's why we came to live here in Atlanta, and I see a lot of uh, things in common. Right, we are more warm. We like, you know, to to understand each other. Like, my for me, the major difference here in the U.S. where we are hiring someone, in the interview process, you have to take care about what you are asking. Right, if it's personal or if it's related to the job description or not. So I have to train myself a lot and also training my, my, my clients because in Brazil, we start an interview like, hey, Cosmos, how are you? Are you married? Do you have kids? Oh, oh where do you live? Um, what do you like to do on weekends? Oh my God, you, you are from the University of Texas. Yeah, yes, uh, me too. I have this friend. Oh my God. So, and on and on and on. Like an icebreaker type of conversation. Yeah. Here in the US, it's totally, totally forbidden, right? We are avoiding asking if you're married, if you have kids, if you plan to have kids, if you, where do you live? It's, no, you can't do it. Right. And I, you know, um, even though I miss sometimes these more personal connections, I kind of understand it's like, no, it's good because you're not hiring me because I'm a nice person, right? Of course, this also counts, but because I have something to add, right? My experience, my knowledge. That's what is important. So I kind of like it the way is here that people respect and, and you have the limit, right? Um, so you kind of avoid um, other things. But in the other hand, it's not easy to make friends, right? It's not easy to uh, really... Uh, it's it's harder to create a relationship, right? With the, what I love here in this country is the sense of community, right? That your neighbor gonna help you, your neighbor gonna watch your house when you're gone, right? Your neighbor say, hey, you're traveling. I can take care of your garbage for you. I can take care of your mail. It is, is awesome. But in the other hand, they do this, but they kind of, the, the limit, right? You don't know sometimes well your neighbor, but he takes care of your mail. Why are you gone? So I kind of like that because you can protect your privacy more. 
right? Yeah. People know less about your life that, that I like it in, in some sense. But in the opposite, it's not easy to break through this and really to to make friends and create it, you know, a small group, even though we do a lot of networking, right? I learned networking here in this country. In Brazil, I never did networking, just to go and networking with people. When I arrived at here, I said, oh my God, how do I approach Cosmos? I say, hey, Cosmos, how are you? <laughs> yeah. And then... You have to to learn that. So, anyways, there is the, those differences, but yes, and I and I I can't say that Americans are doing not from the heart because I see a lot of people passionate about and enthusiastic about what they do, and always they want to you know um, really make a difference, and they are all good people. You know, I. I, I don't live in a in a in a community that has a lot of resilience. I live where everybody lives, right? Here in Atlanta, we have some neighborhoods that you have more like Indians, you have more like Koreans, more Brazilians, more Chinese, more you know, uh, Latin American people, and I like it because. I like to understand and I like to to get involved. Once I decide to move here, the person that needs to change, em embrace, and adapt is me. Not the no. other way around, right? No, so I mean, like, what do you mention uh, about, um, like, you know, like, they'll uh, about, like, your neighbors helping you and everything, but... The, up to a certain point like uh, that's something that I was actually really annoyed about when I first came here right because I was making a lot of friends like uh, it was like it was like I was making friends left and right but it was all on the superficial level like I could not get deeper because for, for me like I'm an introvert so I'm like I'm I'm into like the deep connections right like, because what I had, like, when I was, like, in the Middle East was, like, you'd have fewer friends, but the friends you made, like, they would basically be, it would be on a much deeper level. Like, they'll be there for you and everything like that. But here, it's, like, much harder to find that because it's more, uh, there's a more superficial kind of thing. Like, it's almost like there's a level of inner isolation. Like, people feel disconnected. And I don't know if it's, like, because of technology or something like that, or is it just, like, a cultural thing. but what I noticed like from the culture I came from it is more like it's more deeper and heart based, but it's harder to make good, deeper friends. But in here, it's easier to make friends on a superficial level, but it's much more harder to get to the level where you feel truly connected with someone. But it's mm -hmm. something what I noticed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's sometimes I feel like, um, well, because you don't have the history, like people here, they are good friends, good friends from high school, good friends from college, right? That's where you, you see. And then you maybe try now that I have a daughter in the school years. So I'm trying like, oh, to connect with other moms, right? And, 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 the, and the kids have play dates and you connect with other moms. So, but even though, it's it's not easy and also because i think cosmos in everywhere also in brazil is like a, the city i am from people really don't have time <laughs> you know so you're gonna get like fewer friends right fewer that you can count on your hand and that the, the people that you're going to really connect right like a my neighbors, I have one neighbor that we exchange uh, holidays, presents. Every year we leave at other doors, like a, a bottle of wine, cookies, right? We create this tradition, but I never been their house. They never been my house. We never shared a meal together. Right. But when we travel, I text them and say, hey, we are going to be a week off. So 
they kind of know that we are not here and they take care of our males and they take care of our garbage, this kind of things, right? In the opposite, in the other side of uh, across the street, have this elderly couple that just adopt my daughter as their grandchild. And once in a while we have meals, they were here for Thanksgiving, you know, so it's, it's, it's different, right? And, 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 I, and I like that. Anyways, at least I learn how to navigate and also to choose who, who, who is going to be, you know, really our friends that I invited uh, to, my, to, my, to my house. Um, and this can be in every culture, even Brazilians. I had experience to invite people in my house that I, I can no longer have any relationship with them. Mm. Right? So anyways, I think it's a different way. And if we find the groove, <laughs> right? And also when clicked, that I believe it goes well. But of course, it's easier, I believe, for you as well as for me, to make friends with other Brazilians, right? For you, to other Indians, to other Middle Eastern people, right? Because you kind of know how they behave and what they think, right? Because you have this background. So it's easier, right? Because you connect, we, we connect easily. But, but yes, it's, it's, it's a challenge for us, right? But... I think if you know how to navigate, it's it's really amazing, you know. Um, understand I mean, the differences. I mean, I could I could go on about this for hours, but th there was a good question though. I did wanted to ask you. It's like I know you've been into like like you you worked with like international companies and like big business and all of that, right? And uh, with their structure and organization, what is it? What is like the the main lessons? you learn about what makes a business successful during your time with all of these companies? So, well, what I, I will answer this way, Cosmos. What I like to do is really solving problems. And uh, what makes me happy, brings me joy, is when I see the companies I helped uh, I supported, I advised, uh, succeed, right? Um, and uh, the the major challenge for international companies doing business here, and I handle sometimes big companies in Brazil, but when they come here, they are like a startup, right? They have a limited budget. They kind of will hire two, three people from the beginning, and they, they kind of learn how to understand the market. Some come with this more uh, digested, more understood. Some come with some information and kind start learning what is the risk. Because if you don't know how to communicate with your audience, it makes the work a little bit harder. But the challenge is really, um, I always say to my clients, arrive in this country with your eyes and ears open and your mouth shut. <laughs> Just observe. Just hear and learn right first. I respect that you are very successful in Brazil. But here, who are you? Right? You yeah. are the new kid on the block. Among a lot of other kids on the block. <laughs> right? It's a very competitive market. It's not because the United States is that big in the economy that you say, oh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell mugs. But how many people are selling mugs? And you're gonna sell mugs for who? Right? So that that's, is the challenge. So I always tell them, learn. If you, you're not sure, buy a market analysis. Understand who is your demographic. Understand even your brand. Maybe in your country, the name of your company makes sense. Maybe when you bring your company's name here is 
oh, nobody will, or is something that sounds strange culturally or the language, right? So right. you have to to be to be careful about it, and also your operations, right? I have clients that failed, or at least half failed, or spend a lot of money and time because they came here with the mindset that the way they do their product and deliver their product in Brazil will be the same here, and it's not true. And uh, when they start doing that and, and, and say, oh, we have to reorganize the package, the package has some standards or Amazon or FedEx or UPS not going to take it. Anyways, I had now to have insurance, liability insurance. I have to, you know, all a new world opens up. And if you can understand this in the first hand, you avoid a lot of wasting time and avoid a lot of money, you know, uh, investments, throw in something that is not going to bring the result you want in that timeline. And that's one thing that connects solutions, Cosmos. We always say, like, we're here to help our clients kind of shorter their learn curve, right? and make more with their time and money because we know that money and time runs out. It's unfortunately, right? We, we cannot take it back. Money, maybe. You, 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 you maybe fail here, you invest there and you kind of make more money, but time, time is gone, right? So we, we, we try to really, in our success is our client success. So if we hire the right people, if you help them understand the right market, if you help them how to communicate, to retain the workforce, to prepare a, 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 a real budget, right? An investment here. So we see the chances of succeeding increasing right so that's that's the way we approach our market and that's the way also i've been learning from my clients as we were doing business along of this 10 years now um on market so danila one of the things that i've seen that uh, like from what you're telling me that is important for success in business is knowing your avatar because you mentioned that a lot of people come from a foreign culture and they're successful in their thing, but then they come to America and then they think that what's going to work over there is not go is going to work here. And then they don't realize that the demographic does not want their brand or their product and they got to adjust. And the, the thing about business and entrepreneurship that I would want my audience to know is that you have to adapt. And that's the main trait that I'm seeing in people that are immigrants that are coming from outside is that they're able to adapt and they're able to have what is called empathy and see what the other side wants and people that uh, are successful have that and people that don't like they're not going to succeed but that's so that's what I'm understanding from what you're telling me yeah. yeah yeah exactly I'm not a marketing person but yes who who is your avatar right what their value what they want to buy how they want to buy right uh I say sometimes in Brazil your demographic are young people maybe here is not that young people maybe their male buys more maybe here females buy more i don't know so we have to really understand our avatar and the second layer on that uh cosmos for me is how do i communicate with them not only understand what they want but the way we communicate because some the way we market in brazil is not, and I'm not talking about translating, oh, Portuguese to English, right? Or Spanish to English. No. It's the way I communicate. It's not the language. Mm -hmm. it's what and how I do it that my, my um, audience will understand, right? Yeah. Culturally, even. Yeah, it's it's crazy how like these things ultimately like they're so overlooked, like knowing the avatar, like these are like the basics of business. And like 
uh, knowing who your demographic is. But a lot of uh, business people, at least from like during my time networking and from experience, like they're so attached to their product and their brand that like changing it for the audience, like they they feel like they're losing. They're, they're stubborn that way. But I, I is this just me or like did you notice that while you were uh, talking to your clients and all that, that people are attached to their brand and product and all of that? Yeah, that that's why I always say it's calm with your eyes open and your ears open, right? It, exactly to not be attached that way. Uh, because you have to be able to adapt, or you're not gonna succeed, right? It's it's like you try to fit something in a place that doesn't fit, it's so it's not gonna succeed. Uh, one thing that I like to do with my, my clients when we're talking about people, when they hiring people here, when they establish an operations here, it's one, understand who they are in their country, who they are, values, mission, vision, purpose, uh, the way they, they manage people, the benefits they offer, uh, the thing they all the things they do around attracting, retaining, and promotion people in their company. Once I understood that, because I, I always compare like this, Danila. When Danila was in Brazil, it's the same Danila is here. I, I've I've not changed the, the the person I am, right? What I did, I adapted, right? I learned other things and then I adapted. Right. And that's what I do. So let's grab all this and let's adapt to this country. That makes sense to this workforce. Right. Like a performance review and bonus payment. In Brazil, we think in a salary monthly base. So I said, oh, I'm going to pay you uh, if you perform well, three salaries so it's three monthly salaries when you come here this doesn't make any sense here we think yearly compensation and we think the whole total compensation and then when i'm talking about performance reviewing bonus is a percentage of my total compensation is not one monthly salary so I like to work around that and kind of, it's a work of educating them mm -hmm. as well and help them understand. So I say that we hold hands and we kind of build this together and use what we have best. Bring it here. We don't need to change my identity, right? I'm still Danila, but of course, once I'm here, and I'm speaking and I'm engaging with a different culture and audience. So what I need to adapt so Cosmos can buy for me. So Cosmos can come and work for me and feel connected with my brand and feel that he can, you know, use the product I am selling to them. So that's one of the things I love to do with the clients this merging right is a merge danella i just had a revelation from what you uh just uh, talked about right now and i wanted to share with you you know so like i realized like all throughout human history you know like we've had different cultures nations groups religions and they've always fought each other but i realized that biz like without business and entrepreneurship and uh trading you would not even bother to interact with the other cultures and get to know each other and know that we are more similar than we think. So maybe this is the higher powers way of uniting us together. Because uh, like, think about it, like other than business, like what reason would we have to go to another country or another culture and get to know more about people that are different from us? So I don't know, it's just a revelation I, uh, that came to my mind. Yeah. Yeah, if I want to do business in China, I have to understand Chinese culture, right? How they do business, what they value might be different than what I do. And I always say is there is no right or wrong, right? It's it's the is the openness to listen and understand. It's not 
doesn't mean you have to agree, right? It's not saying, oh, you have to agree. But as I said, when you move to a different country, a different culture, who is the person that has to adapt? You're not going to change the whole world for you, right? Actually, most people think like that, though. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. No. No, I, I, I remember, full disclosure, my first husband, he was from Germany. And we, he, we moved to Brazil. He was living there. And he was complaining a lot of stuff. If you compare Brazil with Germany, oh, my gosh, it's totally <laughs> different, right? Disorganized, noisy. And you go to Germany, all clean, all organized. So he was complaining about a lot of stuff. And I was really being mad with that because, you know, I cannot change Brazil, right? Oh. I cannot change. I just can't. I have no control on that. No, you're you're right, but the way you, the way you're saying it, it's, it's yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was really annoying. And I told him, you know what, you live in Brazil, so this is Brazil, or you adapt, or you're gonna be miserable, <laughs> right? And maybe this lesson when I came to the U.S., may, maybe I learned from that experience that I'll be happy if I adapt. I know that here is not Brazil. So what is this? Oh, this is American and American works this way. So, okay, let me adapt. Even though I disagree with things, agree with other things, some things are easy, some things not, not too much, but I cannot change this country, right? I can influence, but not change, right? No. I mean, it's it's so true, you know, but it's so simple, yet a lot of people have difficulty in doing what what you what you're saying. But on a on a different note, Danella, um I I wanna I wanna go on and on about cultures, but the time <laughs> obviously is coming to a close. So I wanted to ask you a little bit more about uh, your business connect solutions. Could you tell the audience a little bit more about it and the premise of how it got started? Yeah, so uh this got started when I I told right that I moved to to the U.S. and I was working with this this person in Brazil when we decided to open up the company, and I also met a dear friend that has a accounting company, and he was saying to me, Danila, my clients now are coming to the U.S. and they need the operation and they need people and they need these, and so we start to work together. Right. Uh, nowadays, he still send me the majority of my clients. It's it's a referral. Right. And more and more connect solutions. Our core business is in human resources. Right. From the strategy, like, oh, I'm planning to open up a business in the U.S., but I don't know how much I'll pay for a software development. So to understand this, where the, the market is. Uh, to to understand the benefits, uh, how do I attract these people? So all the strategy before coming, if they are ready here, we can help them with talent acquisition, all the hiring process from the CEO to the staff. And once they have their uh, operation here, instead of you, Cosmos, in your company, take care of your human resources, we take care of it. You focus on your product, you focus on delivery the best solution, you focus on your business, and we are here backing office in you, right? In the human resources, helping you, guiding you, and take care of the bureaucracy as well. So you take care of policies, we take care of you know benefits, payroll, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I like to say that we act as your human resources department. Mm -hmm. Right. Where you have one uh, manager, we have, you know, people that work for you and that's where we add value. And once we understand also the other side of the coin, we help with the education, adaptation, cultural wiles as well to guarantee that our clients, uh, they succeed here and understand the doing business here.
And uh, uh, that's our core business. And also Connect Solutions, I like to call as an ecosystem that whatever the company they are in their plan for an expansion to the US, we can help with our ecosystems of partners where we have companies that does immigration, companies that does accounting and tax, companies that do the market search, e-commerce, business development, business plan, so on and so forth. So when the company comes to us, we kind of understand what they need and say, oh, I don't do this, but Cosmos can do this for your marketing, right? Whatever. Um, and then I bring Cosmos to the table and we work together with their client in that stage. And as they go, they're going to need the other services so we can help them all the way through their um, internationalization or expansion to the U.S. strategy. Awesome, Danila. And Danila, I know, like, in addition to this, you have also co-authored a best Amazon bestseller called Business Tips from the Trenches. Can you tell the audience a, a little bit more about the gist of what, what it is about? Yes. So Business Tips uh, from the Trenches was a great project that I had the opportunity to do with other fellow friends, right? Uh, and uh, we just put this together every, we have 10 different entrepreneurs in that book. And we wrote one chapter about how do you be our tips for new entrepreneurs, right? What do you should pay attention? What do you should from our experience? So it's a really, um, it's a, a book that someone that is, thinking in the entrepreneurship or are lonely because as entrepreneurs, sometimes we feel very lonely. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. <laughs> very oh. lonely. Um, it's nice to, to, to read that book and say, Hey, no, no, I can do more about it. That all the ways to do. And sometimes to learn from other experience, right. In, in, in the, the chapter I wrote, I talking about failing. Because when we succeed, everybody say, oh, my God, look, Cosmos, right? What he did. Great guy. So, oh, my God, I want to be like Cosmos. But everybody forgets all the hustles, all the failures, all the, 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 the disappointment and, and um all the crying and all the ads, like, no, I will give up. <laughs> Every year I, I said, like, oh, my God, I'll give up. I'll do something else. <laughs> but I keep going, right? My yeah. goal for 2024, and you know this better, it's create this asset, right? It's it's really creating a asset and really kind of uh, have a passive revenue. That's my my next uh, challenge for personal. I don't know if it related with the business or something else, but that's what I wanna I wanna be in is is a challenge. So uh, this book is about it. Yeah, we have great great entrepreneurs in that book, great people that I I love dearly, and I have the opportunity to share things week in a weekly basis. So it's kind of my advisory board. It's kind of, you know, the people you bounce back some ideas in, in a safe environment. So it's really amazing. That is that is awesome, Danila. And Danila, how can the audience connect with you and get to know more about you and your work and what you're doing? Oh, they can connect with me through our website or our LinkedIn page and also our uh, Instagrams. They can connect with me and via WhatsApp. As an international person, we use a lot of WhatsApp, more than the Americans use. Americans like text message, but we love WhatsApp, right? I'm sure that you do too. No, yeah, uh, uh, totally. Like, because that's how I keep in touch with like my friends and family abroad, you know? So mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And you, you're going to share the information about the website, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, like if you, if, if you would like to share it, then yeah. Yeah, so you can go to connect-solutions.us. Uh, that is our uh, website. Uh, Instagram is connect 
with a double N and double T solutions. And we also have Connect um, HR strategy at uh, Instagram as well. And on LinkedIn, that's where we share the majority of our materials. It's Connect so Solutions HR for international business. That is awesome, Danella. And Danella, I'm so glad that you took the time to do this podcast with me and then uh, our talk about like just the different cultures in general. It's so intriguing to me because I've I've lived that and I've uh, and I've what you have experienced. Like I've had some of that experience as well. So I'm really glad you took the time to do this podcast with me, and I would want to have you on the show at a later time. Yes, yeah, sure. I appreciate that, Cosmos. I really grateful for you invited me for having me here today so and you know you can count on me whatever you need just uh, is a call away please feel free to do that no awesome Bill. thank you and i would like to conclude this episode by letting my fellow extraordinary americans know that hey look there's an extraordinary within each and every one of us and it's our duty to awaken it and unleash it until next time bye for now